hope you all have slept super late today because Sundays are not for doing shit. Somebody can go next door and let the children outside know to just quiet down, please. In the spirit of hyperactive children, let's talk about sugar highs. Ah, but not just the highs, the lows. Okay, so right off the bat, first thing you gotta know, sugar highs, sugar rushes, this hyperactivity that children just consume sugar and then spit out psychoticness is a myth. I didn't believe this at all either because I feel like we've all experienced watching like an entire birthday party of children eat cake and then turn into little gremlins, but it's not real. So there was a study done by a doctor in like the mid late 70s, or oh, was it early 70s? It doesn't really matter, in the 70s. And he basically needed something to tell mothers that kept coming in with their children who wouldn't focus, who were blaming their bad behavior on the fact that they couldn't focus and all this other stuff and decided it is based on their diet and based on the sugar that they were eating and it was causing them to be hyperactive. Doctors today would call ADD. ADD and ADHD were still things back then, but what wasn't as big of a thing was giving children medication for every little thing possible. Since the moms didn't want to give the kids drugs and he just said adjust their diet so they're consuming less sugar because sugar is linked to hyperactivity, but he was wrong. So wrong that there is so many studies done to prove that there is literally no link to sugar consumption and hyperactivity in children or adults. Literally scientists have actually said in certain studies that they have never seen such consistently negative results in a statistic analysis before. Not even just kind of wrong, but like super duper wrong. I don't have an explanation for why children turn into psychopaths when they eat sugar, but most of the studies that I've read are linking the fact that the behavioral effects of the environment that the kid is in when they're eating sugar, so figure like a birthday party or a class celebration or something like that, is what is inducing the hyperactivity and not the physical sugar itself. There is still no science that sugar induces hyperactivity in children or adults, just big children. But let's talk about what sugar actually does. So when we eat foods that have high carbohydrates, high starches or high natural sugars in them, like rice, white bread, even fruits like pineapple, things like that. Our body can break all that down pretty easily and create glucose, which is the sugar that our body needs. Glucose consumed in normal amounts in your body is actually a good thing and not only doesn't make you hyperactive, but can actually calm your body down. That's why sometimes when you have really low blood sugar, you get shaky. That glucose then kickstarts our pancreas to then release a hormone called insulin. I'm sure you've heard of that before. That insulin is responsible for absorbing any excess sugar that is in our bloodstream and kind of balancing us out. But here's the kicker. While it's doing that, it's also converting another molecule we have called tryptophan into two separate chemicals, serotonin and melatonin. Now, if you've heard of either of those chemicals before, you know that serotonin is responsible for the happy chemicals that are in our brains, and melatonin is responsible for our sleep receptors and how we process our sleep cycle properly. So what we feel is a sugar high is actually an increase in our serotonin levels, which is coming from our tryptophan, which is coming from our insulin, which is coming from our glucose, which comes from our sugar. But then after we get that boost of serotonin and that wears off, then all we feel is the melatonin and we crash. Isn't that cool? So what have we learned today? Having an actual sugar high or a sugar rush or hyperactivity due to sugar is not a real thing and I can show you like 6,000 scientific studies to back me up. The sugar high is actually an increase in our serotonin levels. Often all we feel is the melatonin and we crash. Basically just consume it in moderation so you don't crash. If you happen to have a food science question that you want answered or just more info on this specific topic, just comment it down below and I will hit you back. I won't hit you, but like, I will reply to your question and or comment non-violently and respectfully. Later.